most important types of series that we can examine is geometric series. So what's a geometric series? It's closely related to the geometric sequences that we saw in section 10.1. So geometric series with common ratio r is not equal to zero. Uh, is a series whose terms come from a geometric se sequence, c times r to the n. So if we're indexing starting at zero, and starting at zero, we don't have to start at zero, but if we're starting at zero, so the geometric series is the sum from n from zero to infinity of c times r to the n. So that's c plus c times r plus c times r squared plus c times r cubed plus c times r to the fourth plus so on and so forth. Add up all of those terms. And so we want to, you know, the, the, the natural question here, uh, well, well, before we ask the natural question, let's just kind of give a, a quick example. Maybe we can think about one half to the n. Um, I'm, I'm starting, I'm, I'm indexing starting at one, that's fine. So when n is one, I get one half, and I get one half squared, and I get one half Q plus one half to the fourth. And so that's one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth plus so on and so forth. And so uh, something that we should be thinking about is, well, you know, is there a formula for the sum of a geometric series? And as, as it turns out, there is. And so before we get there, we want to think about a formula for the partial sums of a geometric series. So here comes our big formula here, a theorem two, formula for the partial sums of a geometric series. For a geometric series uh, uh, from n running from zero to infinity of c times r to the n, the nth, the capital nth partial sum here, uh, which this line is just the definition, c plus cr plus cr squared plus all the way out to c times r to the big N. The formula for this is c times 1 minus r to the n plus 1, all of that divided by 1 minus r. Okay, so as it turns out, this is not difficult to prove. Let's go to a new piece of paper to prove this, so sn. Just to remind you, it's c plus c r plus dot 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 plus c times r to the n. And so the goal is to show this as c times 1 minus r to the n plus 1 divided by 1 minus r. So what we, so let me put that in parentheses here. Let's multiply s n by r. So we do r times s n. What do we end up with? We end up with, well, let me change that r to a different color, r times c uh, plus r times cr plus r times cr squared plus dot 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 plus r times c times r to the n. So just distribute out the multiplication, multiply each of the terms up here by r, and take a look at what happens. This ends up, so this is just c times r. This is c times r squared. This is c times r cubed. And then there's going to be a c times r to the n plus 1, because we have c times r to the n, and then add on another factor r, that gives us r to the n plus 1, the previous term here would be c times r to the n. So, so let's take a look here. We have s, the formula for sn is up here. The formula for r times sn is down here. These should look very, very, very similar. That, let me put a pink box around these. The box, the, the terms in those two boxes are exactly the same terms. C, c times r, c r squared, c r cubed, all the way up to c times r to the n. So the only difference here between Sn and r times Sn is that there's an extra term of s of sorry c here, and there's an extra term of of uh, c times r to the n plus one down here. 
So if we, so this should give us a formula. So uh, Sn minus R times Sn is going to be C plus all of this minus all of that. Those two cancel minus C times R to the N plus 1. So see what happened there? If we do this minus this, the stuff inside those pink boxes is exactly the same. So it cancels out, and we're just left with C minus C times R to the N plus 1. Okay, so at this point, we are basically done, because the last thing we have to do is factor out a 1 minus R factor from over here, and then divide both sides. Well, I guess we can also factor out a factor of C over here. And so if we divide both sides by 1 minus r, we're left with Sn is C times 1 minus r to the n plus 1, all of that over 1 minus r, which is exactly the formula, which is exactly the formula that we want. So this finishes off our proof of theorem 2. Okay, so then uh, what is the thing we should immediately be thinking about doing here? Well, we know that the formula for the sum overall sum of a series is the limit of the sequence of partial sums. So here comes theorem 3, which tells us what the sum actually is. And so here, uh, if c is not equal to 0, if absolute value r is less than 1, then the formula for the sum here is c over 1 minus r. And if r is greater than or equal to 1, then the series diverges. So this will come very instantly just from using, just from using the, this formula here. So how do we do that? Well, we are thinking about the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence of partial sums. And so from theorem 2, I'm just going to copy... I'm just going to copy this formula down here. So that is c times 1 minus r to the n plus 1 divided by 1 minus r. I guess we are assuming here r is not equal to 1. c is a constant. 1 minus r, that's a constant. So we can move that outside the limit. I guess I should be consistent with capital N's and lowercase n's here. And so what's going on here? Well, let's break this down into cases. If r is less than 1 in absolute value, if r is less than 1 in absolute value, then as n gets bigger and bigger, r to the n plus 1 is getting, is, goes to 0. Right? You know, if this is like 0.1, if we, as we take the limit of 0.1 to bigger and bigger and bigger powers, that's getting closer and closer to zero. And so that gives us c over 1 minus r. Now, if, you know, another case here is if absolute value r is bigger than 1, that tells us that limit as n goes to infinity of 1 minus r to the n plus 1, that diverges. If this is like 2 to the, if this is like if we're taking 2 raised to various powers, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, that goes off to infinity. If it's a negative number, minus 2, 4, minus 8, 16, minus 32, 64, it still diverges. It doesn't go to plus, you know, it doesn't diverge to infinity but it diverges. It doesn't approach any given number. And so that takes care of that takes care of the r is less than 1, absolute value r is less than 1 case, absolute value r is greater than 1 case. And then finally, the last thing to note is just that if absolute value r is equal to 1, well then, we don't have a formula for the geometric sum in that case, but uh, sorry, uh, sorry. let me just back up there. We don't have a form for the partial sums in that case. If r is exactly 1, 
then our geometric uh, series n from 0 to infinity of c times 1 to the n is just c plus c plus c plus c plus c plus dot 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 that diverges and finally if r is equal to minus 1 n from 0 to infinity of c times minus 1 to the n this is c minus c plus c minus c plus c minus c and the formula for partial sums so the partial sum sequence would be c and then c minus c would be 0 c minus c plus c would be c 0 c 0 dot 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 and that's going to diverge In the only case it would converge is if c itself were 0 and we explicitly exclude c equaling 0 uh, from, from, uh, from our theorem. So great, this tells us this is the most important series for us to have and now we have this formula for the sum of a geometric series in our pocket and we also know when it diverges. We'll, we'll look at some applications of this in the next video.